Welcome to video number nine in my series of presentations that will attempt to demystify tourism. I'm Dr. Stan McGay, the creator and narrator of the videos. Their content is based on my experiences worldwide as a professor, consultant, writer, manager, and tourist in more than 80 countries on six continents. Food and beverage, or F&B for short, is also referred to as food service. This is the to eat part of the four operational sectors of tourism. Along with accommodations, it makes up the hospitality side. F&B plays two important roles. One is physiological, as F&B provides the fuel that tourists need to stay healthy and enjoy their travels. The other is social, as F&B provides the setting for socializing and breaking bread with family and friends or with fellow travelers and local residents. Many different types of establishments provide F&B as their primary business, such as restaurants, cafes, bistros, bar and grills, cafeterias, buffets, food stalls on streets or in malls, private clubs, pubs, fast food outlets, and food trucks. They are as varied in size, decor, menu, and price levels as their customers. Most F&B establishments are standalone, but many are located in hotels, especially in Asia. While many people who love to cook and entertain think they could open and run a successful restaurant, there are many factors to consider, systems to learn, business functions to master, and regulations which demand compliance. And don't forget about competition, changing tastes, staff management, vendor and customer relations, technology, and cash flow. No wonder many restaurants fail. Everything in a restaurant revolves around its menu from the restaurant's name and configuration to its style and profitability. Menu planning is a critical task. After establishing the basic concept of the restaurant, other important decisions that involve the menu are which items to include, the menu's appearance, the appropriate serviceware and place settings, plate presentation, and type of service, which could range from French and Russian table service to self-service, as in cafeterias and buffets, counter service, and drive through Many restaurants are known for their signature dish, also known as the house specialty, which gives them a unique selling proposition. Menus can also be a la carte, the most common type, at which customers select individual, separately priced items for their meal, or table de haute, in which a restaurant offers one or more multi-course meals for a fixed price, such as lunch specials. Table de haute menus are commonly used for serving tour groups on the go, since they can be prepared in bulk and priced in advance. Successful restaurants do more than just prepare food that is delicious and nutritious. They make sure the food is safe to eat and employees are working in a safe environment. Sanitation and safety are huge issues taken very seriously by restaurant staff, regulating agencies, and customers. HACCP is a hazard analysis and critical control points program that examines all steps of food safety, from purchasing and storage to preparation, service, and consumption. Some useful catchphrases are, when in doubt, throw it out, keep hot food hot and cold food cold, prepare with care, and time to lean, time to clean. And always remember the danger zone for growth of foodborne bacteria is 40 to 140 degrees Fahrenheit or 4 to 60 degrees Celsius. The brigade system was created in the late 19th century by the renowned French chef George Auguste Escoffier to bring order to the chaos found in restaurant kitchens and dining rooms. Escoffier gave each employee a specific responsibility and rank to avoid duplication, improve communication, and enhance skills. Modern restaurant organization charts have changed due to advances in technology and management, but many of Escoffier's terms and concepts survive such as the various chefs, including my favorite, the patissier, pastry chef. Like hotels, restaurants are labor-intensive, and quality of service helps differentiate them. With many entry-level positions, food service experiences high staff turnover, so recruitment, hiring, and training are always a priority. Opening a restaurant is a risky business, as many fail. So besides good food and location, 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 what makes a successful restaurant? A realistic business plan that examines the current market is a must. It should also cover whether or not going with a franchise is the best way to proceed. 
Cost controls are a major necessity, especially when leasing space or buying a building, buying equipment and furniture, purchasing food, and paying for labor. Service with a customer focus that is both friendly and timely is often as important as a restaurant's menu, location, and prices in the development of repeat and referral customers. A destination should offer F&B in all price ranges from budget to fine dining. Tourists want to try ethnic food, the local specialties, but from time to time they also want comfort food they miss from back home. Good food is vital to tourists' well-being and enjoyment of a destination. Cleanliness of the dining area, kitchen, and toilet is a must, and restaurants should ensure they have proper storage and refrigeration, as well as sanitation certifications for their employees and ongoing training in proper service techniques. F&B can also be an attraction or an icon, such as roasted pig at a luau in Hawaii, or dinner theater with a meal at a magic show on Guam. Beverages both alcoholic and non-alcoholic can complement a meal or be consumed separately. They can be sold in restaurants, bars, pubs, clubs, and other establishments that feature F&B. Beverages, like food, are part of the local culture, such as tequila in Mexico or bourbon in Kentucky. Drinks provide a high profit margin and are often a major part of nightlife. Each destination should formulate its alcohol policy based on its own values and publicize it in order to manage tourists' expectations and avoid potential problems. Food and beverage is a major attraction for many tourists who visit specific destinations to enjoy their specialties, such as pasta in Italy, kimchi in Korea, and beer in Germany. Culinary tourism is a form of special interest tourism, SIT, and a subset of cultural tourism, which makes F&B the central theme of travels. Culinary tourism includes cooking classes and competitions, food tastings, gourmet dining, vineyard, brewery, and distillery tours, and various festivals and events, such as the Florida Strawberry Festival in the U.S., the Gastronomy Festival in France, and the Pierogi Festival in Poland. Food and beverage is critical to a destination's appeal and reputation. If tourists do not like the local cuisine or drinks, they will not wish to stay long or return. Since F&B is such an important part of everyday life, both at home and while traveling, it is always a memorable experience, one that destinations hope is always a positive one. Now I invite you to watch video number 10, Tourism Destinations. Thank you.